Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of what co-ratios are, um, let's see how does it fit into the Cartesian plane. Okay, so in our Cartesian plane, whenever we are talking about an angle like 90 degrees minus theta, since we are referring to the y-axis by saying 90 degrees, that refers to the y-axis. And the angle 90 degrees minus theta, we are talking about if this is 90 degrees minus theta, then that angle is theta. Notice how theta is not anymore the angle that we are making with the x-axis. And if we want to be using the other angle, we want to make theta the angle used with the x-axis, we have to change from sine to cos or from cos to sine. Okay, now in the first quadrant that's really not a problem because sine is positive, cos is positive, as well as tan is positive. Now if a tan won't feature here, but tan also has a co-ratio called cotan. Okay, cotangent. Okay, cotangent shortened is cot, and cot of theta is equal to tan of 90 minus theta. Okay, it's another one you don't need to know this just for interest sake. Okay, so we're only going to look at sine and cos. Now in the second quadrant, if theta is the angle made with the y-axis, okay, now my observed angle is 90 plus theta. So 90 degrees plus theta and all of a sudden we're in the second quadrant. Now if I have sine of 90 degrees plus theta, my angle for sine is positive. So I can change it to cos of theta without worrying about the sine because in the second quadrant, if you remember the cast diagram, C, A, S, T, we've done this a lot now, in the second quadrant sine is positive. So I don't need to worry about the sine. But when I take cos of 90 degrees plus theta, we notice that cos in the second quadrant is negative. So I can change this to sine of theta, but sine of theta is a positive value. Sine of theta, if theta is an acute angle, which we are assuming, then this will give a positive result while this one has a negative result. So we must multiply with a negative. Now many students get confused because they say but sine is positive in the second quadrant. That's correct, but we are not trying to calculate sine of theta. We want to calculate cos of 90 plus theta and that must be negative. And since we are using sine of theta to calculate this left hand side, we have to multiply with a negative because cos of 90 plus theta will be negative. Okay. In the third quadrant, we are not working with 90 degrees, but with 270 degrees. That is the, um, the negative part of the y-axis. So if my angle theta is made here, then my angle that I'm talking about is all the way to 270 and back. That means 270 degrees minus theta. So in the, this quadrant, tan is the only one that's positive. So sine of that will be negative cos. Again, cos would be positive in the first quadrant, so we must multiply with a negative. And cos of 270 degrees minus theta will also be negative sine of theta. And the same is going to go for angles in the fourth quadrant. In the fourth quadrant, that's my angle theta, so the observed angle is all the way to 270 plus another theta degrees. So sine of 270 degrees plus theta, sine in the uh, fourth quadrant is negative, so this becomes negative cos theta. And cos of 270 degrees plus theta is simply equal to sine of theta. 
sine because my axis refers to the y axis and I want it to refer to the x axis so I use the co ratio okay and positive because 270 plus refers to the fourth quadrant where cos is positive so I must have a positive result and there it is okay so let's do just a quick example if I have something like sine of 100 100 is 90 degrees plus 10 so I can write this as sine of 90 degrees plus 10 and since in this is in the second quadrant second quadrant sine is positive so my answer can be cos because I'm using 90 degrees okay which is the y-axis I want the x-axis so I use the co ratio and I can eliminate the 90 and just work with cos of 10 degrees okay so uh, this format or that format is no simpler than the other so we didn't simplify it we simply used the co ratio and sometimes that might be needed to simplify okay let's look at one more let's say we have um, cos of 200 degrees okay 200 degrees is more than 180 less than 270 so it is in the third quadrant and if I want to write it in terms of sine I need to write this in terms of 270 minus so this can cause of 270 degrees minus 70 degrees and now we see again we are referring to the y-axis not the x-axis so we use our sine ratio uh, or the co-ratio of cos which is sine to change that but in the third quadrant so this is referring to the third quadrant cos in the third quadrant cos is negative so we have to also have a negative there okay sine of and now I can get rid of the 270 minus 70 degrees okay now how about negative angles how about if I am talking about negative 90 degrees plus theta okay it's same goes as before the only difference when we s all of a sudden use negative values to refer to the axis is that we are numbering in the opposite direction in the clockwise direction Then this is negative 90 degrees negative 180 degrees and negative 270 degrees so if I have something like let's say sine of negative 300 negative 300 is in this direction okay it's smaller than 270 so it's somewhere in the first quadrant and if I want to write it in terms of cos I know I need to use the co angle so if this is 300 I need to write it as negative 270 sine of negative 270 degrees minus what okay because I'm still going in the negative direction so how much must I still subtract well this one is easy I must still subtract 30 degrees and this will give me since I'm working with the y-axis and I want the x-axis I can change this into the cos cos now should it be positive or negative well sine is in the first quadrant positive so this stays positive and we can eliminate the 270 degrees minus and just stick with 30 degrees one more example let's say we have something like cos of minus 90 degrees minus plus theta and we want to simplify that okay we see the 90 degrees negative 90 degrees is there plus means I'm going back there so I'm in the fourth quadrant okay since I'm working with the y-axis um, angle I'm going to use the co-ratio of cos which is sine I just need to figure out must it be positive or negative sign we're in the fourth quadrant where cos is positive we don't care about sine sine is anyway going to be positive we want to make sure that the sign of the original function is carried over and originally we had cos which in the fourth quadrant is positive that's why we keep it a positive 
90 degrees plus can fall away so we only have sine of theta and there we go the angle my interior angle or my input angle or my observed angle has been made positive and acute and that's it